Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, everybody. We're here today again with Stephen Campbell, the Brain Whisperer. How are you doing, Stephen? Good. I'm doing good. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. You know, Steve, I'm a procrastinator. I, I don't like to admit it, but I, I will find every reason I can to put something off. Why do something today when you can put it off till tomorrow? That's, that's my right. motto. Unfortunately, that's the way our brain works. So I find that, that I find that yeah, it does. I, I find that um, mostly what works for me is deadlines. Mm -hmm. If I set a deadline or somebody else sets a deadline for me, you know, even if I have to cram in college, cram with an all-nighter, that kind of thing. I'll, I'll get it done. I want to get it done. I just don't want yeah. to do it now. Yeah. But, but yeah. you know, it seems to me that there's got to be better motivation than a deadline, than, mm -hmm. you know, that emergency of, holy cow, what? Yeah, happened? holy Wait, cow. Get it yeah. done. What, you know, yeah. how do I, I guess I want to stop becoming a procrastinator. Well, let's go do that by understanding where that procrastination is coming from. Again, we want to go back to understanding what's going on. The procrastination is coming from your motivation. What do I mean? Okay. There are two types of motivations that all of us have. One is called restrictive and one is called constructive. Let's look at both. Let's look at restrictive first, because that one doesn't work. If I held up my palm and you held up your palm and pushed on it, and I pushed on your palm, what would you do? You would be pushing back without any question at all, okay? I wouldn't have to remind you to do it. I push on your palm, you push back. That's restrictive motivation. When you say, I've got to do this now, you know what the brain says? Oh, yeah. Watch me. I hate being told what to do. And that's where all sorts of things come in. It has a whole arsenal of stopping you when you say, I've got to do this now. So let's look at restrictive motivation. When I push on your palm, you push back. Restrictive motivation is also finished by two words. Do this, ready, or else. Oh boy, am I familiar with that. <laughs> or else this will yep. happen, that will happen, this will happen, that will happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, most of us have been raised based on restricted motivation by our parents. Okay? It's part of our life. Now, when we use restricted motivation, our brain does three things and you already know what the first thing is. Art, it's procrastinate. When you say, I've got to do this now, the brain says, oh, let's do it later. Let's do it when the kids finally move out. Let's do it when we pay that loan off. Let's do it when we've taken that vacation. Let's do it when the pandemic is over. Let's do it. And we have all these things that procrastinate us that make us stop from getting it done. The first thing the brain does is procrastinate. I'll do it later. I'll take it off my nap, da, 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 da. And that's the way our brain works. You're not alone, Art. Everyone does that. When you say, I've got to do this, the first thing the brain does is procrastinate. Okay? Okay. If procrastination doesn't work, it goes to the second one. And the second one is... I will do it after I do that. I will get this done after I get that done. So let me illustrate. When we were raising our daughters, let's imagine that we were having dinner, and after dinner I say to Abby and Sarah, you've got 
to wash the dishes. And Abby would say, because she's really street smart, she would say, oh, Daddy, I love washing dishes. I will wash the dishes. However, I have got a term paper that's due tomorrow morning. And I was going to work on that tonight. And if I have to spend my time washing dishes, I'll get a really bad grade and it will be your fault. <laughs> and I would be such a sucker, I would just fall right into it. Oh, really? Yeah, Daddy. It really. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can wash the dishes. Oh, Daddy, you're so sweet. And boom. That's called, basic. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's where do this before you do that. Okay? Now, if that doesn't work, there's a third one. And the third one is, I'll barely do it just enough to get you off my back. I'll barely do it just enough to where you're happy and you'll leave me alone. That's why diets, most of them don't work. Because you're on the diet because you've got to lose that weight. And when you finally lose the weight, you get off the diet and you gain all the weight back. Okay, so here's the third example. Now it's on Friday and we're having dinner and I say to Abby and Sarah, you've got to wash the dishes. They can't use the term paper excuse. So they sort of grumble and say, okay, so Mary and I go to the living room. We're reading our paper. We hear them in the kitchen binging and banging and all this. They finally come to the living room. They say, we're done. Thank you very much. They go to their rooms. I go in the kitchen and see how they did. They did the dishes. They didn't touch the silverware, the pots, and the pans. <laughs> and I go to them, and I say, what's the deal here? And they say, you asked us to do the dishes, Daddy, and we did. You didn't say anything about the pots and the pans. Okay? So the reason you're procrastinating art is because you're merely motivation. You are saying, I've got to do this, and the brain hates that. Okay? So that's restrictive. Let's do now to constructive and write this down constructive says ready write this down I don't have to I want to I like what I'm becoming I love what I am doing and this is my idea that's restrictive. I'll say it again. I don't have to. I want to. I like what I'm becoming. I love what I'm doing. And this is my idea. And that's, that's constructive. That's constructive. That's constructive. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's constructive. Let's look at some examples. Okay. I think one of the most amazing examples of restrictive motivation was prohibition. When back in the 1930s, America said, you will not drink. And we're still paying the price. Because that didn't work. That's a wonderful example of restricted motivation. You better not drink. Ha, ha, ha. Welcome to the world. Here's an example of constructive motivation. When I wrote my first book, I was still teaching, so I only had the time to write between 3.30 and 6. So I'd get up at 3.30 in the morning, write to 6, and go teach. I did that for a year and a half, and by the time the book was published, I was so used to waking up at 3.30 in the morning that I just woke up. Rather than trying to get back to sleep, I would get in my car, drive to this mountain behind their house, and I can see it from here, and run up the mountain. It took about 40 minutes to run up and run back down. It was my favorite time and it still is of the day. I still do this. I get up at 3.30 in the morning, get in my car, run over there, and run up the mountain. People say, that must be horrible. And I say, no, I love that time because it's my only alone time during the day. And it's the time when I get to talk to the Lord. I get to listen to songs. I get to listen to music. I get to see all of Sonoma Valley, which is so, so beautiful. It is my most favorite time of the day. Now, in contrast, if I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and I said to myself, you'd better get up. 
because if you don't get up, you'll gain weight. I would be able to think of a thousand really good excuses to stay in bed. And they'd be really good excuses to procrastinate because that's the way my brain works. But when I wake up, I say, oh, my gosh, I bet there's a full moon tonight. I bet you can see all of Sonoma Valley. It's going to be beautiful. In fact, one time I even took Mary up, get in the car. I need to show you this. And she was really sweet about it. We got to the top and she said, oh, honey, I will go put me back to bed. So I did. But anyway, <laughs> so let's go back to constructive motivation. Here's, here's what will take care of procrastination. I don't have to do this. I want to. In fact, I like what I'm becoming and I love what I'm doing. And this is my idea. And the brain loves that because now it's on your side. And what we've learned is the brain believes everything you tell it. And then it rewires itself so that what you're saying becomes a part of who you are. Wow. Yep, this goes back to your teachings and all our previous videos about making the brain, not making the brain, but, but the fact that the brain believes whatever you tell it. That's right. What you say, the brain believes it. Yeah, I keep yeah. always going back to that. Yeah. So I can motivate myself mm -hmm. if I use positive energy, positive thoughts, convince myself that this is something I want to do. And of course, most of the stuff that I procrastinate on, I do want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I just always you see just the... Want to, you just want to put it off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> want to put it off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like there's something better yeah. to do right. instead. Yeah. There never is. It's just yeah. like... I like to procrastinate. Yeah. Crazy. Well, I Our think, mind is crazy. Well, I have to tell you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to do some very constructive uh, uh, techniques here is now that you've given me this power, I want to end this conversation because this is a book that I've been thinking about writing for seven years. I've been putting off and I really, really, really want to do it. So uh, guys, it's nice seeing you. Thank you very much. Thank Mary for all that help that she does for you. Uh, she's amazing. John, I know you got trees to deal with in the backyard. And uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.